Okay, welcome. Today I'd like to offer a reflection about do I send my child to boarding school? And I've been asked that question and I just wanted to uh, answer using some of the um, information from Alex Renton and um, yeah, some of my own reflections. So enjoy. Okay, so last week I was contacted by a parent and they were asking me about boarding school and just saying they were thinking of sending their child to boarding school and what I thought. Um, so the child's slightly older, <coughs> I think they'll be 13 uh, years and 11 months and nearly 14 at the time and they were just asking me what I thought, whether it was a good thing or not. Or, you know, and how boarding school syndrome would affect them. So I thought I'd just offer this this video because it's I find it's a fascinating subject, and yeah, something really I'm very passionate about. So you know, the reality is is that boarding schools have really changed. They have changed, and I know that on one level. Um, but the question is, is how much have they changed? And, um, you know, so for me, my boarding school life um, and a lot of the boarding school up until probably the 80s, 90s, uh, even up till 2004, um, there was a lot of abuse. You know, there wasn't much regulation around um, teachers, you know, even qualifications. Um, so often abuse or problems would go un, uh, unnoticed. That has changed. So there's much more in the way of regulation with the teachers. But the question I have, and this is also something that Alex Renton uh, points out, is that um, while there's greater regulation on the teachers, there's still quite a lot of cases of abuse or, um, you know, problems between pupils. Now, this is one thing about boarding school is that, you know, while it has changed, so, you know, you, there's kind of greater um, protection for the child on one level, um, there's still quite a lot of bullying in kind of in between children um, so in my school there was 50 of us in a boarding house 50 to 60 and there was one teacher on duty so basically it was us against really the the students more than anything and this is something that Alex Renton points out and if you've heard about everyone invited over the last year you know there's been so many uh, cases between pupils that there's been sexual abuse or physical abuse. Um, so while it might not be happening from the teachers, there is still quite a lot of abuse going on between students. There's a lot of bullying um, and what every invited kind of has brought out. That There's, you know, quite a lot of things going on still between pupils. Uh, so while it has changed on one level, boarding school and schooling generally, you know, um, it hasn't changed on another. So one of the questions that the the person had was saying, um, are there any per, uh, personality characteristics that provide a guide as to whether the child will likely thrive at boarding school or not? Uh, and what I replied was, I felt that if a child is more introverted, then the child is less likely to thrive at boarding school. You know, you get a lot less space. I mean, certain schools, yes, you get, um, you might get your own room. So I know Eton gets their own room, they always have. But other schools, you might be sharing um, a space with five, ten other people. For me, it was 20, 30 people. Um, so you don't have that space. So if you're more introverted and you need your own space, you might like people, but you need your own space, then boarding school will not accommodate that. So even if you are 14, um, 14 is a time when we feel quite uncomfortable 
in ourselves as as boys and girls and we kind of it's nice to be around friends but it's also nice to just chill and have space on our own if we're at home we can potentially get that but boarding school you know certainly when i was growing up you if you were on your own you're likely to be bullied you're likely to be picked on you're like to what's wrong with you you know you're upset and you you people would would kind of um uh, pick on you so um so the you know if you're more intro extroverted though the chances are um you know at my school you know probably one or two on each year the people who are more extroverted they seem to really thrive so if your child is more extroverted, they're 13, 14, then potentially it could be a really good experience going off to boarding school. You know, Joy Chevron, um, Alex Renton, you know, Nick Duffel, a lot of these psychologists talk about the idea that early boarding is not a good thing. Um, you know, 8, 9, 10, 11, for me that's too early. You know, uh, John, John Balby talks about the idea of the attachment uh, disorder when, you know, we have these attachments to our family. And if we go to boarding school too young, then this can really affect us emotionally. We struggle with intimacy. We struggle with uh, relationships. So should I send my child to boarding school, early boarding school? I wouldn't recommend. I really wouldn't. Um, you know, even if you feel like it's a good environment, you know, as Joy Chevron points out in one of her papers, that, um, and Joy Chevron's a Jungian analyst who has been working with ex-boarders for about 30 years um, around this issue. And what she says is that while a boarding school will care for you, it cannot love you. Whereas at home, you are getting love in most cases. Now, some people say, well, you know, if your home life is terrible, then, you know, boarding school is much better for you. And my home life wasn't great. My father was an alcoholic and I asked to go to school to get away from him. But what I did and what potentially we do is we, ex we internalize and we use the person we're probably getting away from, that violent or aggressive person inside ourselves to keep others away from us at boarding school. So while, you know, leaving home might have been good on one level for me, I just internalized that angry male within myself. So really getting away from home didn't really make a difference on one level. I still turned into the <laughs> an angry, aggressive uh, person. Um, so I think they say in uh, social work now that a child should only be taken away from their parents if their life uh, is at risk, it means that they might die. And that's really important to know that, you know, the child really needs to be around their parents and especially early. So if they're 13, 14, then I think potentially boarding school could be a good thing if you have adults who are benevolent, who have done some inner work. The problem is, is most boarding schools, the teachers, certainly when I was uh, at school, maybe this has changed now, they were at boarding school themselves and therefore they were still carrying that trauma, you know, or, so that was one level, was they were... Um, you know, traumatized, and on the other level, they were predators. You either had a mix of the two. Obviously, that's not the case so much, but I'm hearing, because I, I work with people um, in their 20s who have been to boarding school not long ago, there is still not that real uh, duty of care for the children. Um, the So, what I would love to see in a boarding school, age 13, 14, like the old rites of passage. The, the adults step up and they initiate them. They teach them how to be men. They teach them how to be women. They guide them. They mentor them into being an adult. If that happens, then I think boarding school is a great idea. 
I really do from the age of 13, 14. And the age of 16, you know, you've developed yourself. I think boarding school at age 16, you know, I don't have a problem with that. But earlier than 13, 14, when you don't have that benevolent elder there who's really caring for you, who's taking care of you emotionally, spiritually, um, mentally, phys- uh, mo- emotionally, all of those aspects, then I'm not sure how good uh, boarding school is, um, you know, age 13, 14. Um, what else? Yeah. Um, do, do, do. Yeah, so, uh, you know, the the other question this person asks is saying that, you know, the child wants to go to boarding school um, because he thinks it would be, you know, be fun with more children. And that's what I thought. You know, I'd read, um, you know, for me, it was the 70s, 80s. There was lots of boys' own annuals, you know, the lion, eagle. And they all painted this story that boarding school was amazing. And, you know... But it's propaganda. You know, boarding school is not like that. It's a bit like Harry Potter. I read Harry Potter and I cried my eyes out because, you know, there's periods in Harry Potter where Ron Weasley, you know, his parents come up and see Harry Potter to come for the Goblet of Fire, but they don't even say hello to him. You know, he makes the reflection, Ron Weasley, oh, oh, hello, I didn't know you were coming up. You know, and he hadn't seen them for months. You know, and the trauma is an 11, 12-year-old or 13-year-old that can bring up. So, you know, we have been sold this image that it's great. And yes, the physical activities, you know, you might have a theatre, you might have uh, sports, you might have fun with these children, but you don't have the emotional support there. You don't have a space you may be able to go and cry. So while a child might say, Yes, it's going to be fun. You know, have they watched Harry Potter? And they go, oh, it, it, you know. And on one level it might be fun, but not quite in the way they think. Um, so the difference between weekly boarding and, um, you know, for me it was three to six weeks I'd be at boarding school. My clients, some of them were there for three months because their parents lived abroad. You know, now if you've just gone five days, that's different age, 13, 14, you understand that. At age eight, you know, 10, 11, you know, still a week is quite a long time, uh, especially if you're in a place you you don't enjoy. So, um, and I also mentioned about 95% of boarders struggle in intimate relationships. And that is my, my impression, you know that we struggle in intimacy. You read Nick Duffel's work, Alex Renton's work, um, uh, Joy Chevron, Christine Jack. It's like, yeah, that's where we really struggle. Because if you think about it, we spend all day with other children. We go home, as in back to our boarding house, who do we spend time with? Other children. So that's how we model our relationships on children. And these children are shut down emotionally. So we become that. If we show our emotions, we're bullied so we struggle in intimate relationships as ex-boarders you know even if you're there you know age 13 14 you know again boarding schools have changed i'd have to go and see but i'd like to read um just to finish up um some of alex renton's book um what he talks about current boarding schools um where is it he says so it's at the end of uh chapter 46 he just says he's asked the question but it's all changed right nervous parents reminiscing boarders ask me the answer is no a lot has changed but not everything they are still boarding schools okay and he he kind of um Alex Renton did an article in 2014 and 
about boarding school and he was asked he asked and the, the newspaper asked them to send in their stories both positive and negative and he says he received i believe it was 12 positive stories out of 800 so that just shows me that well actually you know some people you know found it and they thrived there but a, most <laughs> a lot of percentage didn't um what's another quote in here um Yeah. What else? Da, da, da. So the conference research shows that this is, you know, seven years ago, two thirds of heads of elite independent schools are worried about their pupils' mental health. Self-harming, eating disorders, depression and cyberbullying are all of increasing concern. Okay, so although you might not get, you know, the abuse that maybe was in boarding school a few years ago, there are still a lot of issues here. And if we're able to go home at the end of the day, we can have our own space, we can talk to our parents. At boarding school, what do we do? We have to repress and internalize. Um, so, yeah, yeah. Um, so I think that that's it. So, you know, do I send my child to boarding school? Is that the question? You know, do your research. It depends on the age. If it's before 13 or 14, I would say no. That, that, that would be my recommendation, no. Um, you know, I've spent seven, eight years doing therapy and probably 25 years working on myself um, post boarding school. And I know others who worked similarly. Girl who was at my school spent eight years in therapy. So it's like, you know, <laughs> uh, there is a cost of going to boarding school. So if they're 13, 14 and the school's really open, they've got really good care, uh, the child is extroverted, then potentially yes. You know, they've got adults who um, are willing to take them on one side. And from 16 onwards, you know, I think boarding school is, a, you know, is, a, is a potentially a good thing uh, nowadays. Uh, but that's my own impression. So hopefully that answers your question, should I send my child to boarding school? But also do your due diligence. Read Joy Chevron's book. Read, you know, Alex Renton, uh, Nick Duffel's work. Uh, just to find out what boarding schools have been like and like Joy Chevron says in her work it's like well schools haven't really changed that much there's still there's not the love there um, you know an early boarding school in her words is is child abuse so hopefully that makes um, sense okay right okay I'll leave it there any questions please let me know okay bye for now